Right, this is going to be a tutorial on how to uh, create a Blackboard test for an essay-based exam, as well as how to go about marking them. There are lots of reasons for using Blackboard test over Blackboard assignments for exams, not least of which the greater control over the constraints. A Blackboard assignment is really only suitable for uploading a file or inputting a text to a place by a deadline and then it disappears. You then use the online marking tool and all that sort of thing to go through it. A Blackboard test gives you the opportunity to do more than uh, text entry, basically. You can do multiple choice questions, you can upload all kinds of different documents and file types and modalities such as video and audio, and so it's useful for things like blogs and stuff like that. So I'm gonna run through an example here. So this is a, a pretend module, and I've got different types of Blackboard test here, but the one I'm gonna focus on today is essay submission. So just pretending that I am the student, I'm gonna go into preview mode and go into the quizzes, and now I'm about to start the exam. So it would become available at the time. This would be the instructions, the rubric, if you like, as to what to do. Now this says that this test has a time limit of three hours. Now they're going to have the normal 24 hour window to do it, or the, the new 24 hour window to do it, but it's telling them, and the instructions would be more specific uh, if this was a real exam, to say, please don't spend any more than three hours. This is the time that you should be spending. We're only really allowing three hours in case you have any issues. Um, now, once they start, a time of three hours will begin. They can close it down and come back later. The time will continue in the background. But the key thing here is that it doesn't have um, a forced submission or a forced complete it in one sitting. Uh, the idea for this being that it's an essay. Yes, I only want you to spend three hours doing it, and you should really sit down in a three-hour window and do it. But because these are different times and people are doing it at home and doing it online and all this sort of stuff, it's given them the opportunity to start the work, leave the work for a while, close it down and come back later. Um, and when it reaches the three hours, they'll be notified and they can either go, yep, I'm going to be honest here and I've spent three hours doing it and I'm going to submit it, but they don't have to. They can continue until the end of that 48, uh, 24 hour period. What this means though, and this is why it's a bit different from a Blackboard assignment, is that it logs the time that it took them to do it. So from the time that they started the attempt to the time that they submitted, they may have spent three hours working on it and the rest of the time they were watching TV, having a break, taking a walk. They may have spent three hours on it in chunks, but it gives an idea as to how wide that time is being used. So we click on begin, and at this point you are shown the question. So we've got the remaining time here, counting down, and here it says, question one, answer this question by uploading your essay as a Word document. Now, obviously, this would be a normal question, um, the actual brief for them to answer, and they would upload a file here, and if we just pick a random uh, file to upload, and that would be the submission, and then I can go save the answer. Now, key here, it's there. I can attach a different file, I can remove that one. If I want to come back later on in the same attempt and upload a different file, I can absolutely do that. The other type of question that I'm gonna show you here, and this isn't to suggest that you do both in an exam, it's simply to house them in one setting here. So it might be that there is only one question, or question one has all of the questions they upload. Uh, all of those, it might be that there are multiple questions, each one is a different question, but they only upload one, or if it's six questions and they have to do three of six, they only upload to the ones that they want, and this means that individual markers can go in and only mark those submissions, those attempts that chose their question. But the other type here, and it's actually potentially more useful for a digital environment and maybe reducing the time that we make these things available for them to do, restraining the time a bit more, is typing the answer. Now the reason I say this is it's the same kind of thing as the file upload, but they complete it online. The difference being that with every keystroke they do, now hopefully what you're seeing here is the saved box up there. So with every keystroke, it saves my answer. So if I lose connectivity, if I get kicked out for any reason, if the Wi-Fi drops, whatever it might be, what I have typed is saved. 
You can do various formatting and things like that, headings, font styles, types, so you can do it as an essay answer. Um, we're not looking for arts and crafts, but it gives them the opportunity to answer in here. Now, key thing with this is not only does it mean that you don't have to worry about having to do the work offline because of online issues, it also means that we can use timers more effectively. It also makes the marking far simpler because it doesn't require downloading of the submission. Uh, they can add in, and this is where it becomes quite useful for things like uh, videos for a culture or a media or a YouTube video that's linked in, something like that, depending on what the exam type is. And this really opens up what we can do with exams as well, rather than have them be purely words and nothing else. Uh, but you can add in tables, links from places, all that sort of stuff, much like a lot of the formatting in an email. It's not quite as much as Word, but we are looking more for their answers, not the formatting of them. So I'll save and submit, and it double checks that I'm okay to do so because I've only given one attempt to do this. You can return to the same attempt as many times as you like, and like I said, you can change the file that you've done. Go in there, and that is the attempt done. So the fact that I have now submitted it means that I cannot change anything. The idea is that you go in and you start it, you can close it out as long as you've saved what you're doing, and if you're typing in, it saves as you go, and you could come back later and it would say there is an attempt in progress, and you click on that blue link uh, when it says that, and it takes you back to your current attempt. It's only when you save and submit that you're now locked in, and that is your task done. Now, if I exit the preview, and if we just go in here to look at the attempt there, so I'm the same student going back in, uh, this can begin to do later and there we go you completed the test back to the course of your attempt so I can't do it again now I'm locked in which means if I had submitted work because I was happy and then I got told something else and I thought oh I'll use that information you now can't this really helps with um, assessment offenses now if I exit the student preview I'm now in as a staff member and I'm going to go about marking them you go to course management, scroll down to grade center, and it's a Blackboard test. I don't want to see every column in Blackboard grade center, so I'm just gonna click on tests. I don't want to see all their coursework scores. And here we've got the preview student, and I've got this essay submission Blackboard test. Now, if I was marking all of the submissions, or if everyone had done the same question and multiple staff were marking, you would just click on the drop down, click on the attempt, and the latest attempt would be the one that they'd done if you allowed multiple and you would go in and mark it that way. If, however, I'm looking to mark just my question, I would click on Mark Questions, and I have a separate video about that. So for now, we're going to mark this particular attempt. And here we've got it there. Now, this is my submission for the one that I uploaded. And in this case, similar to a Blackboard assignment, you click on the file, and it asks where you want to save it to. You would then annotate it or work through it and then you simply enter the mark in there and I'm going to give this 6 out of 10 points. You can type in feedback to the student here. Then for the other type, their, their answer would be in here. Give an answer, this is what my answer would be. So that's all that I typed as a preview student for that particular response. My feedback would be something like, Okay, and the student would see that. Again, I can give it just one because they made an attempt, but it was less than stellar work. That's feedback that they would get. And I haven't had to download anything there. I would see exactly what they wrote in that box. The key thing here, particularly useful thing, is if you are not giving individual feedback, if you're not annotating individual scripts or individual answers, but you're going to want some feedback for either the external examiner or possibly to remind yourself for if the student asks you to talk through their work, you can type in There you go. So that just reminds me that they didn't, really didn't do much and then I can scroll up and go, ah yes, this was the one where they just wrote, this is what my answer. And that's why I gave it one. You can then click Submit, and that now appears in Blackboard Test. So out of 20, they got 7. 
Now, the way that I set that one up, if I just quickly take you into that, and again, this is now as a member of staff, and click on Edit the Test Options. And these are some of the key things to think about when you're building a Blackboard test. So we have the name of what it is. We have link description saying this is what your exam is and where it is. And then here I've got make available yes, because I would assign a visibility to it. Multiple attempts, no, because I want them to be able to return to the same attempt. But once they submit, I want just that information. I've set a timer for 180 minutes because that's how long I would like them to spend on it, even though they'll have 24 hours within which to either open it at the very start of that 24 hour period and take 24 hours to do it or to start it at a different time on that day, but they must do it before the end of that 24 hours. And I've also got auto submit is turned off so that when it reaches the end of this three hour period, they can submit if they want or they can continue writing. It wouldn't be a good idea to do auto submit on because the timer will continue if they are kicked out of the exam, if their Wi-Fi drops, or if they choose to leave it for a while. And therefore, if they started it, and then three hours later they came back to it, they would find that a blank screen had been submitted. So for the time being, auto submit off is a smart thing to go by. I would give it a visibility date rather than a due date. So I wouldn't give it a due date. I would simply make it visible and invisible at certain times and then include the testing grades into calculations because I may want to make it a weighted column based on their exam and their coursework for a final module grade later. Now here are some other key things here. Show results when attempts are marked, not after they've submitted it so that when I've marked that one submission they can see their mark. When all attempts, everything with a yellow exclamation mark in grade center has been marked and show the score per question. If it was coursework, you may well want to give them feedback. But if it is for just giving the mark and giving cohort level feedback, then you just want to show the score per question and leave it at that. If you have got MCQ, short answer questions, whatever it might be, you may want to do one at a time questions and prohibit backtracking because that way they you reduce the risk of them using a later question to help inform how to answer an earlier question. You may also want to randomize. And that's really all I've done for those. I hope you found that useful.